Uh, I want to make sure I ask you so that we don't webcast me saying your name wrong. Do you like Jamil or Jamil? Both is fine. <sighs> Both are fine. I'll alternate. Just not Jamal. For the purposes. No. <laughs> well, calling you Jamal would be embarrassing. So I won't do that. OK. All right. All right so uh, Jamil, how did you get into tour management? You manage uh, Drake and Lil Wayne. Did you, those are big names. Did you manage names that weren't so big first? Um. Yeah, I was doing a lot of like managing and tour managing around LA and like uh, I, my first tour ever was with, with Slipknot and uh, it was this tour called uh, Mayhem Fest right. that that Kevin Lyman puts on. Right. He's the owner of Warp Tour, or the yep. founder of Warp Tour. Yep. And so that was back in '08. Right. And then how'd you get involved in that? They didn't like just find you and say do it. Well, right. I had to kind of find them. I um, I was always interested in tour. Well, the the name of the company is Four Finney. Yep. That's Kevin Lyman's company. And I was always interested like in touring and shows and you know, meeting musicians, meeting bands and whatnot. Right. And so um, he has a company called Four Finney, which right. does productions right. and tours. And I sent my resume in them. And where, how did you build that resume? What did you do? You worked, started working in clubs, just working at, at other gigs, pushing cases for free. What did you do to, no. to like build a resume? Internships. Internships, yeah. internships, internships. Who my intern first, for? my first one was for Universal back in LA, back in like 07, right. 06 or 07, and um, so that's how I was able to build my resume on the on the tour, on the Slipknot tour, as like the record label coordinator, yep. promotions coordinator for the whole tour, and that that experience came from um, my internships over at the record labels. Right, great. So then. Uh, so I sent my resume in for Warp Tour. I didn't get that job, and I was really, really, really bummed. Yeah. And um, so I, I emailed them maybe like a month later. and was like, yo, I know I didn't get the job on Warp Tour for like the third year in a row. If there's anything I could do. Way to open if, strong. Right. Like, <laughs> yo, but like, it, I'm, like at this point, I'm ready just to come in and do office work for the summer, you know? Yeah. And like an hour later, I got a call from the office and was like, um, Hey, we still have your resume on file from last year, uh, and we have this festival coming up called Mayhem Fest. <clears throat> do you want to do it? And I was like, I have to get back to you to see if my schedule, you know, like <laughs> per per permits. And yeah. I remember like calling Rob. He's in here somewhere. Like he's like the first call I made. Like yo, like I I just got this call about the Slipknot tour. Should I do it? And he's like, hell yeah. So <laughs> so the schedule was clear at that point. It was always clear. Yeah, I know, I know. I, yeah, kidding. but basically, yeah. so I called back yeah. and like, yeah, I can do the tour. Yeah, Rob said, hell yeah, I can do it. Right. Uh, Rob, that's what I called back and yeah. said, hell yeah, I can do like yeah, this tour. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I, I got on that tour and it was on, uh, it was, it was crazy. So how long a tour was that? That was seven weeks. And how big were we talking? Clubs or were we talking sheds? Theater, or? Like, like sheds. Like yeah, like fifteen to twenty thousand people. So y'all know when we when we when we refer to a venue as a shed, it's like an amphitheater, like uh, an outdoor amphitheater, an outdoor amphitheater with some covering over the seated area, and then there's a lawn. Right. Name. You can probably name some Meriwether Post in D.C. Right. Right. Places like that. Yeah. So, and that was your first tour. My first tour. It was like my, my first official tour. I had done tours like with um with bands and not and whatnot, just like in like in like in four hundred dollar vans that we had bought. Just I'm from LA. Yeah. So we would go like to to San Fran up north, and yeah. we would go a, a little east to like Arizona. Yeah. And back and forth between that, but that was like my first tour bus. Right. Tour laminate. And what, tour. and what was your gig there? What were your responsibilities on that tour? Well, basically on that tour, there's a lot of, in, in the rock world, I guess in, in the rock world too, of course, we got a lot of independent record labels, you know? Yep. And, and the Slipknot was the headlining band. They're on Roadrunner Records. Yep. yep. And, then, um, and then you had a lot of other bands that had uh, indie labels, and they couldn't, it cost to put somebody out on the road, you right. know? So, <clears throat> so basically what the festival said, because I guess like each 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 record label will put somebody out there and it costs like eight thousand dollars or so. Yeah. But what the festival will say to like the to other labels, like if you don't want to pay the eight thousand dollar fee, we have a guy who's working like on three or four other labels and he's like a record label promotions coordinator. Right. So if you don't want to put somebody out there, he'll handle all your promotions work. And right. Yeah. So you, you so that was the work you did on that tour, right? So you weren't the you weren't the TM on that tour, but Not you at all. you did you did promotional work on that, right? Tour. So that that got you on the road to start seeing 
like a road routine, right. what it was like to live on a tour bus, right. what it's like, what, what a day in the life is like. You, right, you and I, I mean, I, have, I was already kind of used to that because when I was down here, I, I had a radio show. Right. And, um, I, and I've been going to shows for a while yeah. and just hanging out, just making friends and bands, yeah. artists, other artists, you know. And so I kind of knew like what went into it, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I just kind of got right into it. Great, that's great. Um, now, on the tours that you manage now, I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, do you, I mean, first of all, do you consider yourself a freelancer? Do you yeah. still, you, you'll tour manage anybody who offers you a job as long as you're available, or, or are you contracted to the artists that you tour manage now? Well, I, as, <clears throat> as far as, um, it's not really contract, but it's, it's a type of loyalty thing. Yeah. Because like if Drake hits me up and is like, yo, I got this tour <coughs> coming up, I can't go. And I, I basically like my first priority is Drake, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if another artist hits me up and like, yo, I need you as a TM, I could either one, I mean, it hasn't happened yet, yeah. but I'm prepared to like either one, like tell Drake, yo, this is what's up. Yeah. Is the and if the if the money's right, you know. But you don't yeah. want to get out of. I mean, you don't want to lose the Drake gig until you have either something bigger to get into. Right, or, right, right. Or so so you manage your schedule now. Right. Drake's dates are are scheduled pretty far ahead, I would imagine. Right. Right. Six months, eight, nine months in no, some cases. No, no, no. Maybe maybe <laughs> like three to four months sometimes. Like we we have we have Europe coming up in January, and then after that is. I know we have tour dates right. in March, but I'm just not sure. You right. Know? So they're so, getting confirmations, but you don't have a routing yet. You right. don't have a done route. Pretty much. And for Drake, you your full your TM, you oversee the entire the entire tour. Right. And you know, in the event that Drake sort of stops touring for a while, mm -hmm. and you need to do something, do you go on retainer for Drake? Well, if, if for the past like year or so, it's been pretty convenient because there's always been dates in the future, you know? Right. Yeah. So what I'll do if if I if I know okay I'm off this month, but we have a, a, a tour coming up in a month or so, just like say January. Yeah. I'm advancing that tour. Right. And that's the type of retainer because I still have to get paid right. for. I mean, because I mean. Well, you're on production schedule at that point, right? Right. So pretty much. Can you explain to these people in this room what advancing a tour is like? Let's let's advance one date. Okay. Right? Because this is something I talk about all the time. Do right. I always talk about advancing dates? Right. I always talk about this. It, it is what separates amateurs from professionals. Right. It is absolutely necessary. It's important as shit. And nobody does it. Right. It's important. Right. So basically. So advance a date with me. Okay. So, so let's say you work for. So this is what happened. I'll get our, our schedule. Um, ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello. This is Jamil, Drake's tour manager. Do you like to say Jamil or Jamil? I like to say this is not Jamal, Drake's tour manager. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> So, hey, what's up? So, uh, when's our date again? Cool. What, what? I have you on here. You are New Orleans rep. I got the schedule from our, I got your contact from our agent, right. Rob Gibbs, over at ICM. Right. Okay. Um, cool. So, I, I think you already talked to our production manager, Tony. Yeah. He sent you our production, um, our We're, load in times, our stage plots, and all that. I want to talk right. to you. Right. So, we already did. So, we already did with your production manager, because that's going to be one of my questions, too. You, there's a, you have a department in, you know, within your tour. You, you have your production manager. So right. your production manager will hand, handle logistical, like hard logistical issues, like right. load in, load in, load out, sound check riggers, times, this, that. sound check times, or will you handle timings? I, I, Tony, Tony and call me and say, yo, we're loading in at this time of day. Right. I'll be ready for sound check. I'll be ready for the band at this time. That's great. Okay. So then, so then Tony's done, done his thing. You right. already know your load, your load in, load out, curfew right. maybe. Right. So tech issues, all that stuff's been resolved. You right. know that the staging is adequate. You know the sound needs are adequate. You right. know, you know lighting is is adequate. You've got everything, or, or or you've ordered more stuff that you need, or whatever. Right. You talk about what you're bringing, what they have. Right. Right. So that that's usually, but I like to like I use. Don't talk about that stuff with them because Tony's taking care of that. Right. And so I don't want to, you know. We love Tony. He's done. Tony's done Great. the job. So at this point, yeah, I talked to Tony. He was cool. He he. Uh, we settled our stuff. Now, cool. what do well, we have to talk about? Was Tony high? <laughs> yeah. Um, I I don't think so. <laughs> well, then good. Then you probably yeah. got the everything. There, we got from. everything right. What I'm calling about is like the um, just just the artist side. Did you receive our writer? Do we have enough yeah. people to transport us back and forth? Yeah, West? I have your hospitality rider. Perfect. Do you still have 36 people on the road? Perfect. Yeah, right. Good. Right. And, and Any then vegetarians? Sometimes, you have vegetarians? We might have like two or three. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that, and then sometimes they'll be like, I'm looking over this budget right here, 
do you, is there anything we could cut back? Right. You know, so it could stay within budget. Yep. Then I'll ask, is it, is it, is it a sold out show? Right. And if he says, when, when we go on a sell out show with some, with some, um, with some, what is it called? Percentages? Oh, contracts. Yeah. With some contracts, depending on how the deal is structured at the time mm -hmm. of the show, the show is sold, we'll, yeah. we'll get percentages, you right. know? So let's just back up for, for the sake of the education of these young people. Right. So, gotcha. uh, you, you know, the, the, way the, con the way some contracts are, are, are structured, many contracts are structured, um, on a sold out show, you're making more than your guarantee at that point. You've been guaranteed a fee to show up, but now you've sold more tickets, the promoter's made all his expenses back or her mm -hmm. expenses back, and now we're all profiting. So now we have to, we're gonna share the profit, maybe 85% to the artist. So now that we know there's money to be made beyond the guarantee, my guarantee's in my pocket no matter what, okay? But right. now there's some money to be made above and beyond the, the guarantee, all of a sudden you become interested in shaving off expenses, right? Right. You don't want them wasting any money because for every dollar saved, you've got 85 cents coming to you. Right. Okay. So, so I mean, I'll never just like cut stuff just to cut it and right. then our show be sacrificed, right. our people's comfort sacrificed. But yeah. you know, if, we're, if, if I can cut stuff, then I cut stuff, then I'm like, okay, cool. Right. Well, you got any questions for me that you need to know? Right, well, I mean, first of all, you've also gone over things like, um, you know, bus, bus parking and right, things right, like right. that. I mean, because not every, I mean, we're, we're talking about clubs and, or, or theaters and not sheds, right? right? So they're saving bus parking for you. They know how many in your party. Right. They know, <clears throat> they know what time you're going to show up for check. They right. know what time you like to open the doors, what time you like to hit stage, what time you get off stage. Do you right. have opening acts along for the ride? Right. Do they get sound checks? How do you want to handle that stuff? You do all that with them. Right. Right. And then, <coughs> and then, and then, oh, well, and I'll also always ask what's curfew, you know? Yeah, of course. Because if... Um, Why does curfew matter? Because curfew matters because if you break curfew, then they start, depending on what city or state you're in, you have unions like labor hands, and we got to yeah. pay all that. And that comes either, I mean, it's never actually come out of our check, but somebody has to bite that cost. Yeah, if it's a union, if it's a union house, if it's a union theater or a union shed or something, then there are people who are, who are, who are, who are on the clock. Right. as union employees and if they go overtime somebody has to shed a lot of money so and that's and somebody and at, has to bite that cost, at some point know? it comes out of out of, right. out of somebody's money and somebody asks for money when that happens right so okay so that's great so and then yeah that's usually how the advance phone call goes so that's that's so that's advancing a gig now there's a lot more to the day than mm -hmm. those calls that you're making right right now let's assume you're on the road Okay. And and you're on the road today. What's your day like? So I usually uh I wake up. Um, Where are you usually? On my bus. On the bus. Well, unless it's yep. uh, unless it's a fly date. Let, let's say you overnighted on the bus. Cool. Overnight right? on the bus. I'll say let's say, all right, we were in Houston. Uh, bless you. Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Lobby the call. most considerate tour manager ever. <laughs> no, but let's say lobby call. Yeah. So lobby call for everybody, that's, that's um, when we leave. We're moving to the next spot. Right. Even lobby call. So we're leaving from Houston, maybe six, seven hour drive. Right. I'll put lobby call maybe around, you know, maybe around six. So I can roll into a city around noon, right. which is usually check in at a hotel oh. between noon and one. You know? Now lobby call is for everybody on the crew, right? I right. Mean, you, so Tony, <clears throat> so Tony have his production lobby call. Yep. And obviously they usually leave after the show. Right. You know, to head to the next city because yep. they load in early. Right. You know, and then so I, I, I deal with, like I'll deal with the band and then I'll deal with Drake, you right. know. So like I'll set the band's lobby call then I'll set Drake's, you know. Yep. And so, um, so I roll into the city and around noon. Yep. And then check everybody in the hotel, make sure everything's straight. Then I'll, um, Usually that morning, I would have gotten uh, a press list from our publicist, yep. and she'll send me the, the days, all the all of the um, all the approved press people, you know. Right. Uh -huh. So so I look over it, um, <clears throat> and I'll so set press time. So you guys get into town at noon. Right. Where do you go? Do you go straight to the venue? Or do straight you go to, to a hotel? hotel? I yeah. You I travel hotel. with the band, so yeah. the band might says we go straight to the hotel. You know. Right. Get them checked in. Make sure my bus driver's cool. Right. And then um, the and day then, before, I, have, I would have sent out a day sheet, a schedule for that day. Yep, yep. You know, so suppose we roll in, sound check is at at, at two thirty. I tell everybody, okay, cool. You guys got uh, lobby call for sound check will be two. Right. 
So you guys got two hours at the hotel, you yep, know? Yep. Boom, get ready, and I'll see. And then I'll leave to the venue, right. check everything out, and start doing my day, and they'll, they'll still be at the hotel. Then around 2 o'clock, I'll, I'll either sit in a runner for them, mm -hmm. or I'll have the bus come over. I was going to ask you about that, too. You have another group of employees that you manage, and right. that is bus drivers. Right. right? Now, they're not the easiest people to manage all the time. And you got to get them their sleep. Right. Right. So if they've driven eight hours, they've got to be off for 16 hours. Right. right? So with, with, with all our bus drivers, we use a, we use a company called Pioneer Coach. Yep. They're both based, based out of Lake Nashville, I think. Right. Yeah. But so for bus drivers, they're, they're not unionized workers, but it's kind of a union because there, there's certain rules and restrictions you got to go by. So right. for the bus drivers, for, for like you said, every eight hours, they, they have to just get eight hours of sleep. That's right. So, yeah. and if, so suppose we have a nine or 10 hour drive, yeah. they'll get what you call as over. An overdrive. Overdrive, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And, that, and that's, I think, it's, I think we do it by. Uh, Our driver's always got another day's pay. Right. Our driver, we, after eight hours, that's when we started. It, it was hourly. Right, right. You know? because, it, because also there's mileage overdrive is, right. overdrives too. Right. Over 500 miles is an overdrive. Right. So, I mean, you, you can see how, how a tour manager isn't just showing up and picking up money. Right, it's, I wish. It's, it, yeah, that would be awesome. It's not just like hanging out a lot with the band and then picking up money. That's also cool. But it's like you're, you're literally managing, you, you know, you're getting things done through other people, right? You are managing a lot of, of human beings. Um, and, and, and they all have their own needs and they, have, they all have their own restrictions. And, you know, I can imagine that from time to time you're juggling things, right? Right, all so, the time. So you, get the, so you get into the hotel at noon and you tell them they've got two hours until lobby call, right. when, at which point you're going to head over to the venue, right? Right. At that time, you're not using your bus for that, right? Right. So you've got another team of people to be managing. Well, well sometimes. So, so, Let's pretend you're not. Okay, boom. Pretend we're not. So what are you going to do? Your bus driver's asleep. Cool. Bus driver asleep. I would have got a call from or a text or email from our production assistant, Tony's right. assistant. Yep. Yo, here's um, the list of runners for today. Right. The runner allocated for, for the band yep. is so-and-so. Here goes their number. The runner allocated for the crew is so-and-so. Here <laughs> yep. goes their number. And we just have a floater. Here goes their number. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll hit one of them up and say, cool. Um, how far is the venue from the hotel? Yep. Can you come pick, pick oh, sorry. Uh, my assistant, uh, me and my assistant up, yep. and then bring us over the venue. We'll start doing our thing. Yep. At 2 o'clock, head back to the hotel, bring my guys over for sound check. They'll yep. be over from 2.30 yep. to 3.30. Then I need you to run them back, and yep. then, yep. yeah. The runner is your, so your person for the day. So you got, you got runners, you know, basically driving vans back and forth, right? right? So, so at that point, you know, you know that, that part of your crew is asleep, right? right? I mean, your bus drivers are asleep, right? right? And, and uh, the rest of the crew is at work. You know, working the, at the venue. Right. right. Usually by like usually by that time, the crew will have been done setting up, stage will be set, yeah. and then the only people really working are the sound guys doing sound check. You right. Know? Right. Right. Okay. So so that's a day, um, and and obviously we, we just went over some of your daily responsibilities. Are there is there anything we left out? Yeah. Oh, um, we have stuff like I know when the album was coming out, it was so much press. You yeah. know. Right. So what. Thank God we have like a really good publicist. His name is Sarah. She's based out of New York. Right. And so what she'll do, like there, there are literally hundreds of people who want to like either interview Drake yep. or they want to, we have like photographers, local media coming out and whatnot. Yep. And, and what she'll do, she'll say, okay, today, um, this is what we're working with. Drake has this interview, this interview, this interview. Will you please schedule it, fit right. that in the schedule. Right. And here goes a list of approved media. And do you have a window every day that you just basically blanket reserve for press? Right, right, right. So, so what I'll do, I'll usually, I, I like to do from 7.30 on. Like right. if, if he's on at 9, yeah. then I like to get him in the venue at 7.30, do 30 minutes of press. Right. If, if it's that long, if wow. it's not that long, cool. If it's that yeah. long, I like yeah. to allocate 30 minutes. Yep. And then... Boom. And then I usually like to give them an hour of me time. Right. You know, right, before yeah. the show. Right. To get ready, vocal warm ups, all that good stuff, you know? Right. So I'm surprised that he does press so close to the to to stage time. I, right. like I, I know I've tour managed a lot of bands that will do press after sound check. Right. They'll finish sound check and like, like we'll we'll put in an artificial window between sound check and dinner. 
Well, see, with, with him, he usually he doesn't really come to soundcheck, right? Unless unless we're in another city, are we incorporated new songs? So that's when that you night. get him. You basically, while you have him, is when you use him, right? So okay, I usually get him because sometimes, suppose let's just say suppose we're in Houston again, yeah, and it's a six-hour drive. He might not leave. I might not make their checkout. Right. To noon of that day, right. and get him in the city at six, you know. Yep. And mm -hmm. then check in the hotel, do whatever he has to do, right. and then come over to the venue right quick, and you know, let's do our thing, right. do the show. You're right. gonna be up all night, then you can sleep to noon the next day. Right. right. You know. Right. Yep. So, can you go over the 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 sort of figures that you oversee on a tour? Who do you who who directly reports to you on on a, on, on the tours that you're doing at this level? Um, it's the band. Like I, I'm <coughs> responsible for them. Then I have how many uh, band? How many band are there? Uh, six total. So you have six individuals on stage every night. They're performers. They're right. musicians. Okay, great. Right. And then I have uh, my assistant. And then I have that's like all who are on my bus, my party. Right. And then I have like we oh we have different. Tony parties. and his crew report to you, right? No, no, no. Tony oh. like to I'll deal with Tony directly. Right. And then Tony's crew reports to him. Right. Like right. the he's the production manager. Right. So everybody involved with the production of the show, like I.e. lighting crew, yep. riggers, sound crew, yep. all that. That's that's his department. Like I don't even like to. Right. You know, right. deal. But with you that. don't talk to those people, but. They I'm, report to Tony. Right. I mean, I mean, you don't have to deal with those people. Right. Basically, but they I'm report to Tony, and Tony reports to you. Yeah. Right. Tony and I are like the like the like the co-captains of the team. Right. Right. You know. And then the two of you, just to get the sort of org structure down, right? Mm -hmm. The two of you guys both report to management. Right. So we have like on like Wayne and Drake's manager is Cortez. Yep. So I will report to him, and then I will report to like Sean G. He's our business manager for the tour. Great. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Next. Okay. Cool. So you settle shows. And on this, on this, on this run, it, it turned bigger. So we have a tour account. Like There's on, on bigger tours, yeah. we have a tour account. Yep. Suppose it was a smaller show, I I would settle them. You know. Right. And settling show settlement is another thing like tour advances. Like people don't really understand show show settlement right. quite quite as well as they they should, in my opinion. Okay. Tour accountants are valuable but they're not always there right when right. it's a huge tour you'll have a tour accountant come right in. um you know i'm trying to get a tour accountant to come here to, to just give their point of view mm -hmm. uh, my um my my business partner is dave matthews band tour accountant oh nice so you know that gig right, right. that's a, that's that's hectic as and like to be honest i hate that gig yeah oh, it's, like it, just to be respond just to know like okay you have a check for two hundred thousand dollars in your property or something yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of stressful. Yeah, it's stressful. Not only that, but how about when you actually have to settle a show right. and you're trying to, to, to like hammer down the bottom line, make sure that they've spent what they said they're going to spend, right. right? That's a big part of right, a right, show right. settlement. It's like going over expenses, going over ticket stock. You there, know, seeing, there's like a lot of times when everything is uh, same kosher during the day yeah. with the promoters, yep. and then when it's time to like settle the tour and get the check, they'll be like, oh, well, here... We have to take out for this. Yeah. We have to take out for this, and like that's what sometimes when it gets heated. Yeah, that's right. That's you know? where that's where the that's where it gets a little more nasty. That's where it's like, yo, like where is our money? Right. So, <clears throat> no, I mean th there are there are promoters who will try all kinds of games at, right. at, at that time. Definitely. We used to have a promoter that we knew who would put a gun on the desk. Right. Like, wh what are you messing around with? This seems ridiculous. You're gonna shoot me for show money? It's like right. it's retarded. And at, anyway. in Atlanta last year, when we were, um, we had a show with Wayne, and we had to settle. And the promoter, it was, it was Wayne was like pretty hot, you know, yeah. at that time. And um, and the promoter was really, really, really pissed off because uh, it was at the Phillips Arena in Atlanta. It was the, I remember, never forget the day after Christmas, and he got mad because um, the the show didn't sell out. Right. And they had it was supposed to be like a big Christmas jingle bash. From right. from the radio station, right. and there was no ticket sold. Right. I mean, it was an eighteen thousand person arena, and maybe like three or four thousand tickets sold, but there was no promotions whatsoever. So, at a time like that, that you're, you might be tempted to ask a promoter whose job it is to promote a show. Right, and and like promoters, they're usually supposed to spend like a certain amount yeah. on the promotion of the show, you know. Right. But um, this was a one-off for us, right. you know. So I didn't too much know what was going on, mm -hmm. and. 
I, I'll never forget, like, what, it, was, it was, the whole day was, it was messed up, you know. They had too many acts. Uh, and, and this is painful for a tour manager because you've got the artists to worry about. Right. right? You've got this unpleasantness to worry about. Right. It's like the kind of thing that gives a tour manager an ulcer. Right. I mean, like, thank God for me, like, on, on the tours that I've done, we've always had a good team. Yeah. You know? So that makes, I know, like, okay, and if, and if your team backs you up, it's perfect, you yeah, know? Because right. it's like, yo, Tony, like, Tony, our production manager, you come on. Vern, our security guy, you come on. Yep. Wayne or Drake security, you come on. We, like, we got to get this shit rectified. Yeah, right, like, they're right. trying not to pay us our money. Right. And they're threatening us, but, right. like, back to Atlanta, this guy, <laughs> it was like 12.30 at night. Wayne was supposed to go on at 10, but there was so many acts, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course, with all those acts, shit gets backed up and right. whatnot. And I just remember, like, the promoter was mad because he didn't have all the money, Yeah, you know? And and he came, it was, it was I remember it was me, Cortez, and our security guys in a room. And it was like eight promoters, they busted in the room, like, mm -hmm. yo, like, y'all, they, they were mad they didn't get any radio drops or anything right. to sell the show, yeah. you know? Yeah. But Wayne, I guess, uh, Cortez told him, like, yo, we haven't done radio drops in three years. Yeah, yeah. And he was just going off. He was like, "Yo, somebody's not making it out of here tonight." And he was like, he was taking off his clothes, taking off his jewelry. I was just, I was just like, as long as he, they're calm, my team was calm. I'm gonna yeah. try and stay calm. But yeah. I was like, man, like I'm about to die after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm about to die over just this this stupid radio show. Cause he yeah. was like, I don't even give a f. I'm going back to jail. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> And I was just yeah. like, man, and it was it was a it was a crazy situation, but yeah, settling. But all that all that comes back to settling, and like, thank God for a, a good tour accountant. Right. Can I you ask know? you how you settled that? We they eventually got all our money. Right. And then Wayne went on like at twelve thirty at night, yeah, yeah. and then they were extra pissed right. because think about it, it was like a Sunday night. Uh, you have a curfew of 11 o'clock p.m. It's yeah. now 1230. And he's already, and he's just going on. Right. And yeah. we're still going to do our full show. Yeah, right. You right. know? Yeah. So, you know. Yep. It, it gets unpleasant. I mean, one of the questions that I had here that I, that I wanted to ask you was, uh, how do you cope with difficult people or unexpected situations? But I think we kind of covered that just now. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, that's you know. exactly what I was, what I was hoping to, to, to hit on, you know, was right. like, it gets pretty crazy. It can and, get pretty and crazy. And people can be really difficult. Right. But, like, what kind of guy do you have to be? I mean, I, I think you, you sort of alluded to that. You, you, you have to sort of remain calm and just know that you've got your team behind you. And you, right. can, and you can get done what you need to get done. Right. You just, like, it's, it's yeah, you got to be calm. But you can't be too calm because then people try and take advantage of you. Uh, calm is different than, than, um, than not doing anything. Right. right, you you got to be there and be alert, but 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 calm. Right, calm and alert is probably the right combination. Right. Right. Um, when you're not on tour, mm -hmm. what are you doing? <laughs> are you always trying to find a new another gig, or are you always working the next tour? Well, for, or, or do you have other all other the things past you do? Two years, it's always been like like. Thank God for me that there's, a, like, Wayne and Young Money have been hot these past yeah. two years. Yeah. Like, I'm still in school, you know? Yeah. So if I'm not on tour, I'm usually at school trying to figure out how to graduate or right. hanging out and advance to the next tour. Yeah. yeah. Or, or just, you know, going to shows. What are you studying? Mass communications and radio broadcasting and music yeah. business. That's great. Great. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think it's great that you're doing that at the same time as you're working, yeah. doing, doing what you're doing, because you're, you're figuring it out. You know, you're seeing right. how these things apply. Right. Um, <clears throat> what's the hardest part for you? Um, I don't even know what time it is. Do we know what time yeah. it is? Five okay, great. I don't want to, like, get, I want people to be able to ask questions. You guys have questions, or should I keep talking? Yeah. You have questions? Okay, good. So we'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll do another couple of minutes, and then... So what's what's the most difficult part for you? The difficult, most difficult part for me, is having to manage. On well, on this tour, like touring is pretty easy. You know, if you're what if you're with a group of people you like, it's so much fun. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean it's hard work. Yeah. But it's just like day to day, like 
yo, this is pretty crazy. It's easy depending on the personalities, right? right? And on your personality. Right. Some, so, for some uh, people. Like on this tour, is there, I'm dealing with a lot of Canadians, you know? Right. Like the band, they're, <laughs> like they're, there's a lot I have to be aware of. Because, you know, mm. like. Um, it's hard to stay awake around Canadians. All right. Well, not really. No, no, no. No, no, no. It but is it, for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, personalities. Yeah. You got to, I mean, you got to make sure you're eye to eye with everybody you're, right. that you're responsible with. Right, right. But, I mean, other than that, like, I've just, I've gotten into a, such a crazy, like, sleep. Sometimes yeah. when you first get into it, your sleep is, like, hard to deal with yeah. and constantly moving. And, like, all the sleep you get is either the tour bus or yeah. the airplane. Yeah. So yeah. that might not be, um, I don't know what I'm Ideal. That's not yeah. ideal. But, I mean, right. so, personalities, so, yeah. So that's so the most difficult part for you is what travel, the, 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 like getting enough rest. I mean, what are you saying? Personalities. I love I love uh, traveling. So, other than so, that, so the personalities are the most difficult right, just thing. Making sure, like that's the challenge. Right. Just making sure everybody's happy. Right. You know, and not saying that's difficult, right. but that's in some cases the most challenging. So then, what is it that keeps you happiest and most interested in the gig? Honestly. Yeah. That person's ringtone, whoever's phone is ringing. But um, no, like music, because I love music and yeah. I love live shows and I love like meeting new people right. and finding new business opportunities. Or yeah. like I remember we did this college tour not too long ago and it was like it was just really cool being able like being like college in college and going to see how other colleges across the country did it. Yeah, right. and being able to like because when we were doing other colleges, it was usually the SGAs or the store student organizations, right. you know, putting it on. Right. So you really get to go to these other college and see the people who are hustling right. in that city and right. putting on, like, bringing these platinum selling hats to the school, you know? Right. So right. that was cool for me and partying. Great. Yeah, partying. Yeah. Yes. So... You see life getting busier for tour managers? You, I mean, like the, the industry getting busier for tour managers? Do you think that there's going to be less work for tour managers? Where do you see it headed? I think that since record labels are like record sales, I mean, I guess I don't know what record sales are right now, but... I, I'm, I'm not great. I mean, yeah, they're still in shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so the, so the main way for people to make money is touring. Right. You know, touring or publishing. I feel like those are the two ways to... To, to make money, right. you know, unless you're selling a million records. I mean, who like the Gagas are still doing? Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah. you have like yeah. extreme cases, you know? Yeah, of course. But it's touring, so I feel like that's a job that's always gonna be around. Because there's never gonna be a day where somebody doesn't need to manage like this multi million dollar operation, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Well, now, what about it at a lower level? I mean, do you see that, like, tour management at, a, at, at, the, at, the, at the entry level of tour management? Well, yeah, because there's always somebody. Like, I have a lot of friends, like, who are, who are not, they're not local bands, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're, they're, they're really big bands, like, right. I, like, in, like in the rock world. Right. I have friends like Suicide Silence, like a day to remember, like mm -hmm. Prada, and all of them. They might not tour arenas, but they're constantly touring yeah, around yeah. the world, you know? Yep. And there needs to be somebody who oversees that. Right. You know? What about other skills for a tour manager that maybe make you recession proof? Like, I know, uh, uh, you know, Bill Ramey, he, he, he tour manages. Uh, Beastie Boys, and, mm. and but he also does front of house. Right, the guy right, right, right. is always able to work. Right, there's all. I mean, depending on how how busy it is, like I mean, I'm I don't know anything that has to do with production or anything. Right. So that might suck. But like, if I, I don't know. Like I just on a tour, I wouldn't want to do anything else but tour manage. Right. You know, because right. I mean, unless I was just in an entourage hanging out. Right. You know, but I I do know like at a. At Does that a, pay well? The entourage thing? No. Because I was trying to get one of those gigs, too. But. I mean, I was. Sometimes I'm like, yo, I just wish I could just party and drink. And, <laughs> yeah. You know? But, I mean, well, I guess... that doesn't pay real well. Right, That's the it problem. doesn't. But, I mean, but, like, on a smaller level, let's just say you don't have a, a, a tour accountant and a security yeah. Yeah. and a... And a front of house and a monitor guy. Yeah. That tour manager, he might be getting paid eight hundred bucks a week, but he has to do all of that. He's got to do everything. You know. That's right. Yeah. And so I think I think with tours like that, yeah, because I mean, obviously, the more skills that you have yeah. and anything, yeah. the the better you'll be. That's that was one of my questions as well. I mean, you know, 
give us an idea of the range of salaries for tour managers from low end to high end. For just tour managing? For tour managing, yeah. I don't know, because like I, when I first started as a as a tour manager assistant, I was getting like seven fifty a week. Right. You know. At what at the at the level of uh, sheds, you're playing larger venues. Right. 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 So this, like when I first started tour manager, and like yeah. in that department, it was with Wayne, and we right. were like doing like it was all sheds or sold out arenas. Right. You know? Right. And yeah, so yeah, like five hundred to seven fifty. But right. I, I do, uh, and, and it also depends on what genre. Right. You're in, right? Because in rap, there's there's just more money, or the right. artist just demands more, you know. Mm -hmm. Like in and 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 rock, like in the rock scene, I know tour managers who have four different gigs, and they're like still getting paid half, or, you yeah. know, like yeah. what somebody who does one right sole job right. in rap making, you know. Right, right, right. So yeah, I mean the 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 salary spectrum is pretty wide. I mean, you can go out as a tour manager for a band doing a national tour as an indie rock band and you can, you know, make 500 bucks a week. Right. Uh, you know, but most of that you're going to be able to bring home because the tour also pays, you know, pays your way and, 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 and you, um, and you get a per diem, which is nice. Per diems are that's uh, always you know, nice. And uh, it's basically I, money you live on during the day, and you get fed dinner most of the time. Right. And what I do, just like a, a word of advice or a thing of advice, if anybody ever tours, like save your per diem. Yeah. You know, like eat, I, I just have them. Um, like we just did a six-week tour, and I told our tour accountant, I don't want any of that money to the last yeah. payout. Yeah. You know, because yeah. then you that's money that. I just act like I don't even get a per diem. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just like, oh shit. Hotel we're, breakfast. Right. The you know the hotel breakfast buffet. That's good. I mean, and catering. And catering, catering is always good. And but, dinner. And just to, um, if anybody is touring or running tour, like, just remember, like, expensive hotels are not always the best. You know. No. If, if, Isn't uh, that the weirdest thing? Why does an expensive hotel charge you for internet you have access? To pay for everything. And a motel six doesn't. You don't have to pay for shit. I know. Really, you could get free breakfast, yeah. free laundry, Tell free internet, that. all I that know. stuff. I know, you're preaching to the choir. Right, right. Sorry, guys, but yeah. And yeah, save all your money on tour if you can. Um, all of it. You, have, you see yourself doing anything after tour managing? Is this yeah. a stepping stone for you? What's the next? What's the, what do you want to do next? Like, I don't know if you guys know the little man, Matt, but we have a company, and like he, like he runs his promotion stuff and his management stuff, and it's cool because... Uh, Oh, one important thing I want to say, yeah. um, whatever you do, like, try and have something of your own, you know? Because, mm -hmm. like, I mean... Talk about that all the time. Try and own your stuff. Right. Own your stuff. Like, I was working, I was working for this lady. She, like, put me on with this whole, like, touring at this level type thing. Yeah. And eventually I broke off. But try and always, like, whatever you do, try and own your stuff, even if it's at the smallest level, you know? Because right. right. eventually assets is all you're going to have, you yeah. know? Right. And if I mean, if shit falls off, and if you if if, if you don't have a, a tour or something or anything, it's always good just to even if you're working for somebody, yep. own your stuff. Yep. Uh, start your own company. You know, right. even suppose if if like you're you're a professor here, you know, but I, I'm sure you have a side hustle. You know, I have a little thing I do on the side. Right. I mean, just try and always start your own stuff. You know. Yep. yep. It's it's not a better feeling than. I know I'm working for somebody, just like I'm working for Drake, you know, mm -hmm. technically, but I still have my own company, yeah, yeah. who that all runs through. It's, it's really important, and we, and we talk about that all the time here. Mm -hmm. it's, really, it's, it's really important for you to make sure that no one can take away the thing you do. Right, and you, it makes you feel better. It really does. That's right. All right, so we have any questions for Jamil? You lied. You said you had questions. Go ahead. <clears throat> There's a lot of people on the side. Yeah, they're all, and they're in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, to be honest, tour managing was just something I kind of fell into. On the, like you said, it was at a stepping stone. It's, it was a stepping stone. To, a bigger thing, like at, at the point when I start touring with Wayne and them, it, it was two years ago, but it was just like at, at that point, my, my thing was just, I need to make more connections, you know? And if I don't take this, that'll be a whole world that I'm shut off to, you know? 
So, I mean, I guess I would have been prepared to tour in any capacity. But, I mean, are, are you, is your question about touring or are you? I mean, we all love to hang out with bands. Right. We love meeting new musicians. And those are some of the interests that you had and you chose to perform in. Right. And now, what are some other things that, that you thought about to make a company with them? Okay, radio. Like, I had a radio show back at my school, and I just, like, I don't know if any of you guys from LA, but Big Boy, he's like my idol, you know? So I know, okay, I wanted to be on the radio, you know? My, my thing was, if I'm not, if I know like I'm not in a band or something, make, I need to make, a, I need to make an outlet for, for people in bands. I just don't want to be hanging out with bands. What can I do to be like, yo, he, he, he not only hangs out with us, but he, he does shit, you know? Like, the radio show was good. I know people who, a good thing to always do is start like a webzine or a magazine, you know, or, or, or start something where you can interview bands, you know, or make bands as much as you want to be around these musicians, make them want to be around you, you know? So, I mean, it's just like, like going back to what I said, start something. Yeah. Are you good at photography? In a time being, <coughs> before you, you're, you get to where you ultimately want to be in the, in, the, in the music industry, if you're good at photography, start, start taking pictures of bands, you know? If you go to write and start writing about bands, you yeah, know? Yeah, if, if you start something, then you bring something to the table. Right, you know? it's always it, it, it's bring something, because it just <coughs> makes you that a little much cooler, that you're not just hanging out, but you can actually bring something. They can, they, that the band can actually introduce you to their people as, yo, this is what this guy does. Right, and it's amazing how the good people stand out. Right. When somebody's good at what they do, it doesn't matter what they're doing. If they have, like, a, a webzine, or if they are a photographer, or if they're... Or if they have like some podcast they do. Right. When if they're good, you remember them and you're grateful for their having their stuff together and for them being good. And 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 if, if you're good, you people are naturally attracted to being around you. You know. Right. And don't be a groupie. Whatever you guys do, don't be a groupie. If you're if you got a good magazine, don't be that super groupie good magazine fan. You know. Or don't be that super groupie photographer. You know. Just be chill. Right. Yeah. Questions. Other question? Please, somebody. Come on, seriously? Hey, oh, Aaron. What's the home girl? How are you? Uh, where you get your degree? Yo, wherever Diller lets me finish my degree. That's what it is. I could have been graduated a while ago. Uh, it's terrible. Come here, I'll take you. Oh, yo, if I, you get me out this semester, I'll do it. <laughs> hey, guys. So. How you doing? Victor. It's my homie right there. It's Victor. It's L.A. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so what I was wondering, um, so like from, a, from a, um, a lower standpoint, like, you know, you're doing like Drake and Wayne and stuff like that for like people that are starting up or whatever, like you don't, you don't actually do any booking, but you confirm the booking. Like what's, what's, uh, all right. What's your relationship like with the booking agent and everything like that? Like, how do you like? His, I'm sorry. No, no, no go no, ahead. No, no. You might have a. You honestly, I, I, I want to let you. Answer. I want to let you speak. Mm -hmm. But the issue is, is, is that is, you want to know. You. Yeah. I'm just clarifying. Mm -hmm. You're saying that that uh, he doesn't book the bands, which we all know. You know, tour managers right, right. not booking. A booking agent's booking the band, right? Yeah. You want to know. Like, I mean, like, if you're, like, okay, I don't, on a on a smaller level, you're like. A mixture between the booking agent and the manager, usually, right? Right. So I mean, like, uh, you, on a lower level, ahead. on a lower level, suppose I was, you know, like just a band with, uh, with me and my friends, my homies. I would be that liaison. Right. I would be that booking agent. Right. You know, and that's just me. Like, uh, let's just say on your level, also. It'll be a thing where either you're you're calling the venues and saying, "Yo, I could pull this many people." I have this pre, uh, then the venue be like, yo, okay, I can give you this much, you do pre-show, this or that. Yeah. On, the, on the lowest level where I think like all of you guys are at, not saying like you're, you're the lowest level, but it's all, it's, it's, you kind of got to do it yourself. Yep. You know? You got to call those venues, you got to call, I mean, because, I mean, at our level, at your level, nobody should have a booking agent, you know? It's, it's just you hustling, you know, building those relationships. Right to where you do all that, you know? And then you become like a jack of all those trades. And, and at the level where, where you are now, the dates are, are long confirmed and contracted. 
you're like you're basically where the rubber meets the road. You're right. you're where it all you, you know you're making sure that it happens the way it's supposed to happen. Right. Quality control. <laughs> right. And we've been talking. You know, we've talked about it as mm -hmm. making shit happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You it, make shit happen. If it doesn't happen, it's it's on you. I look like a dumb shit. Right. 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 I know the probably doesn't answer the question. Did that answer the question? I'm sorry. My relationship with the venues is usually I just, I, I, aside from advancing, that's pretty much all my relationship. Right. You know, I mean, unless I continue to roll through so, there with different artists. Right. You, know? you, you, you may see people from year to year or whatever, right. but it's basically the, the production facing aspect of the venue. You're, right. not, you're not dealing with the talent buyer, the person who bought the show. You're right. not dealing I with mean, that I mean, I do have, like, we <clears> have, <throat> I have good relationship with our agents sure. and stuff, but I mean, that's, I mean, I guess that's by choice, you know? Exactly. You right. know, but Not by function. Right. 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 Okay. Cool. Good question. Elizabeth. You, you totally have to use a microphone. She's bold. Okay, so earlier you mentioned um, cutting costs while still maintaining a certain level of production quality and also um, comfort for the mm -hmm. crew. What are generally the first things that um, you would look to cutting costs on? Um, catering numbers. I know if everybody, suppose I know we're not going to have a sound check that day, I'll cut out lunch, you know, for my band and the artists because we're not going to be there. And that's, and, that, and that's still being charged for head, you know. And then they'll be like, okay, here goes your dressing room writers or anything you can cut. And if I have, say, back stock of candles or incense or... Yeah. Or, or you have uh, six cases of Chivas from past gigs. Right. You don't need yeah. the Chivas that night. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> you know, so I mean, it's, 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 it's simple stuff that you can go, go without. You know, I wouldn't say we're cutting this light and red today. Right. You know, it's just maybe I don't need this bottle today. Or if you know, <clears throat> I mean, I, well, no, it's, it's, it's funny, but I mean, you, know, you, you finish the gig and, and a lot of times you walk out of the dressing room and and there's and a full touched. bar and nobody, nothing's touched and you already bought it. So if you're not taking that home, putting it on the bus in boxes, you're right. it's it, going to Matt and G then, you're <laughs> then you're leaving your money. Then you're leaving your money in the dressing room and the people who clean up are gonna take the stuff home. So right. if, Somebody, if it helps at you the end of the day, later. even if shit, even if you don't use shit, that's just still gotta be paid for. Yeah, exactly right. You know. So, so uh, but what about, you know, if you have an outdated rider, tech rider, for instance, and you know they're bringing in some piece of gear that you don't need. You try to make sure that that gets cut. Right, 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 right. right. <clears throat> and I mean, usually what we'll do, we update our riders from tour to tour. Yep. Also. Right. Or from leg to leg. Right. Like we have, like obviously, like we just got off of a six-week tour, and that was a big tour, and we're going to Europe in January. Right. But I mean, stuff costs more in Europe, you yep. know. Yep. So, and you, the first time around in Europe, you never make as much, you right. know. Yep. That's when you make the least, you yep. know. Yep. So you just like we're cutting a lot of our production, you know. But we're still giving the people our show. Yeah. But what were we talking about? I'm sorry. Cutting expenses. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, you never sacrifice the show. Right. You right. know. But yeah. But there's always some room to cut a little they're, fat. They're, they're real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Three, four hundred bucks here or there, a thousand, twelve hundred dollars here or there. You you can actually save money. And then and then you make and then when 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 you're able to work like cut with, the, it makes the promoters happy. Yeah, yeah, you know, because their profit is tied to your profit. Right, right. So they're you know? making their profit too. Right, right. Any final words? We're at the end here. This is great. Thanks, Jamil. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.